So he's got ossicones. Watch now, he'll duck as we do this. He's got ossicones, of course. Those are the horns on the top of his head. But you can also see there's a lump up between them. And that is the protrusion of his skull itself, that solid bone. And that's an additional fighting weapon for when he decides to challenge another male giraffe. And he's been so obliging, this gentleman. He's also, as Fergus pointed out, which I didn't notice, but he's also got a very interesting face. It's a very pale face with very few patches on it. And of course, each giraffe is unique in terms of their patterning. And he's very, very pretty. Long eyelashes, slightly, slightly wonky ossicone. But his face is really very pretty. Off he goes. Thank you, mister. He's been so obliging. He really has. He's been sitting here waiting for us. Umka, by the way, I double check a an animal that really would not like to meet my surprise. I feel as though this is the only luck we're going to have today is with buffalo and elephants. We've come across a bizarre scene, and, and we're just taking a step back and watching at the moment. There's a huge herd of buffalo. I mean, you can see they're streaming in. And when we first spotted them, just after you left us, they were crossing the road, all calm and and collected no nothing nothing seemed out of the the norm and then the next minute there was one cow that started running with her nose towards the sky as if she was about to chase a lion or a predator of sorts and she ran into the lugger and then she didn't come out and then there were a whole lot of other buffalo that followed her also sort of running and and bucking and bronking they went go, went into the lugger and then they would come around this sort of shrub where you can just sort of you can just sort of see below below those buffalo and then they were looking around there and then they were running back into the lugger I don't know what they're doing, but I'd cite it for a mud wallow. I don't know. It's all very confusing. And they kept going to a shrub. I honestly thought that there was a, la a lion laying around here and they were going to chase it. It looked exactly like it. And then they were going around in circles. And now they look fine again. Now they were fairly relaxed. Well, as relaxed as a buffalo is going to get. So bizarre. See, now look, they're running off again. And then they stop and they turn. So with all the wind, what also could be happening is there could be scents of predators swirling in the, swirling in the wind. Look at them. Oh, they go, off they go again. Now, Kerry, you're wondering what is a, typically a huge herd of... The whole time I've been back at work, and there we go. We've managed to find him. And I said there might be a leopard behind the dam wall. I was convinced that we might find one in this heat and here we go how cool is that so he's lying in a bit of a horrible spot it's not great for viewing but it's still a leopard in the shade and it certainly makes my day when i find spots and the other interesting thing is his belly is full 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 so he's got a nice big round tummy which means that he's obviously had a meal at some point so that's really cool i'm glad we managed to come down to chitwa that was a good stroke of luck wasn't it well done vm as well vm's looking out and he heard the impala snort first before me so there we go it takes a bit of a team to be able to spot these things how cool is that i love finding leopards it's the best thing in the world far too long that we haven't seen him oh he's a beautiful cat though he is going to be a seriously stunning individual when he's older in life he really is got one of the most captivating markings on a leopard that they dark and black and rich around his face those light greenish eyes you can see his ears are still in perfect condition and he's got his mom's coat he's got that darker kind of orangey gold coat much darker than what we see from Hasana so he's a really good looking individual and one that I'm sure is going to captivate many in his life now I'm going to sit and spend my afternoon with Tumbo because this was our kind of goal was to try and find a leopard this afternoon and I found my favorite individual so I'm gonna spend as long as I can with him and hopefully we'll have an epic afternoon and he'll move around but while we do that Jamie has got something that is already on the move well everything's nervousness is really quite quickly explained now that we've found the lioness that has been wandering about so I think that the jack the jackal just kind of fell foul of the the jumpiness that the lioness's presence invoked Oh, we're gonna. Cheers, guys. 
buffalo. How many are there of them? Uh, okay, well, when I was in Zambia, the smallest herd of buffalo uh, I saw was between eight, about 800 buffalo or so. And then the biggest herd I saw was about 2,000. And it was quite common to see sort of between 800 and 2,000 buffalo together. In the Sabi Sand, we'd see huge herds of 1,000, you know, 500, 200 was a typically common size herd of buffalo down in the southern sands. And here I would say it's about the same, anywhere between 100 to 150. We'll still have a few of those. And then the catfish, well, the catfish are a special one because they can survive in very extreme conditions. And you'll find that they'll have populated a number of the, the bigger water holes. And as we get more rain, they'll then start moving to the smaller ones that fill with water. And so, no, not quite yet have the catfish moved into those smaller water holes. And you will find that will be later. I hear some really very interesting behavior that drew our attention to these jackal. They were being chased by topi and they were being chased in particular by a female topi with a with a young calf and i've never ever seen that before now they're being dive bombed oh guinea fowl now they're being dive bombed by the lapwings of the area obviously really not a species that is particularly welcome around here i've never ever seen a topi chase a jackal before is she gonna go is he going to go as well no i don't think he is quite <laughs> what's going on tommy making sure that they don't go anywhere near her little one obviously jackal are largely scavengers and largely will eat there's a lot of time in the same place and doesn't seem to move around a lot and so if we know where he is it's a good place to check and to keep moving around and to keep coming and back to and eventually you know we'll pick him up I reckon quite a lot in behind this Chitwa Dam wall area. It's a great place for leopards. I've always had a lot of luck in this section and always kind of have had great leopard sightings behind this dam wall. It's shady, it's thick, there's a lot of gullies and drainages which is great for hunting. So it is the perfect place if you are a leopard to spend time. But look at how beautiful those eyes are. It's most definitely Tumba and I believe a lot of you agree that it is him. It's just now that I can see his face a little bit better it is him. When I first spotted him, he just glanced over at us and those eyes just looked like him and so that's why I got a bit excited by all of it and I didn't actually make sure. Kerry, you're asking, you wonder if he'll hunt tonight if he's that full. Well, Tumba is an interesting character, is that he always seems to be up to something. And so even with a full belly, I'd imagine he's going to be quite explorative and try and kind of move around, explore a tree, shall he, should I say? I don't know where that other word came from. But he might move around, and if he gets an opportunity like Impala's coming towards him, he'll most certainly take it. He's an opportunistic animal, he's a young male, he's finding his feet, and so any chance to hunt, he will take. Even if he's full like this, it's also just the curiosity and the, and the youthful exuberance exuberance in him that will make him kind of go after certain animals even with a full tummy like that. So I don't know if he will be too full of hunting but he'll definitely want probably water. You can see he's panting quite heavily. It's a hot afternoon. So regardless of what happens I'm pretty sure he's going to move at some point and either go and drink maybe towards the dam which would be ideal or he might go behind us here in this drainage section. There's a beautiful little water point inside there that's very reclusive and very kind of hidden and it's a great place for a leopard to go and have a spot of water so you might head in those directions we'll just have to see but what I think I'm going to do is just quickly reposition us because VM's got not much to work with the back of his head and if I reverse back to my other bird book and the male ground male crowned crane is slightly larger than the female sorry just while I'm thinking about it um, Umka wants to know how much giraffe need to drink in a day giraffe are actually they'll, they'll readily drink when there's water available but they are in terms of the animals that we see out here they're one of the animals Animals that is quite well adapted to surviving with quite low levels of water so one of the big adaptions of course for, for desert dwelling creatures and, and you do find giraffe species in the desert is their loop of Henley in their kidneys is much much longer proportionately than something like a human so essentially where all of the water as the kidneys filter the blood and as they, they sort of remove the, the toxins and the urea or whatever else it happens to be, as they filter the blood, there is a reabsorption process that happens in order to draw water back into, into the body so that it's not lost. And the longer the loop of Henley, the more water absorption can occur. So they've got quite long loops of Henley within their kidneys, within their the nephrons, yes. The, um, 
Tristan apparently made mention to it. Apparently, the the sound was just so terrible because we wear our microphones in our hats, and apparently, it, the the wind passing over the microphone was driving people crazy. So, unfortunately, no. Uh, until I can figure out a solution, the Out of Africa hat has been put aside for the live safaris. What you up to, yuckles? I really think they're lurking about looking for baby Thompson's gazelles. And the Tommies are not very happy with them. And that one on the right is probably a mother. As you can see, she... And that one as well. You can see some of the Thompsons are not really reacting as much as the others are. And there's a chance that there's young Tommies around here. Uh, Paula, you say don't jackals usually wait for dark to come out. They are active pretty much all the time. That jackal's found something. I don't know what it's chewing, but it's definitely found something. Um, jackals I've that I've seen, I've seen them active at pretty much every single time, every hour of the day or night, except really right in the hottest time of the day, in the middle of the day. But otherwise, I, I've seen jackals around and about all the time. So yes, they they, they do wander around and they probably cover greater differences at night but they are not strictly nocturnal and that she's walking in she could either be an Egyptian goose she's that's the pride name that's not not an animal she's definitely not a goose or she could be Magoro or she could be paradise quick phlegm and grimace she's obviously smelled something nice there the way that she's walking out in the open like this, I don't think she's after anything. Theodore, it's actually quite difficult to tell <clears throat> when the lioness is in front of the antelope because the shot becomes compressed. So it, um, she looks closer than she is. I think she's probably... I can't even see her anymore. I think she was probably around about... Mm, 70 odd meters away let's go let's reposition because there are some baby topi up ahead and baby and well we are but we've come here and we were busy setting up to look at the hippos and the impalas have all just started snorting behind the damn wall so everybody looks on edge everybody looks very skittish there's a couple of water buck that are here that are also looking a bit nervous so we're just having a check you can hear every now and then a little snort around us now i'm not sure they've seen anything but everybody seems to be fairly kind of confused and it's not the typical kind of snort where you hear when you get some world. Hello boy. So, sorry Megan, if you can just repeat that for me, my earpiece just pulled out. So, our beard, you say bingo, exactly. Bingo is the exact right word for this. This is so cool. I'm so glad we managed to find him. And luckily, he's also lying in, uh, I mean, it's not the greatest place for sure, and, and we could have better areas, but he's lying in a place that at least we can find him and we can see him. And hopefully, at some point on the afternoon, we'll spend some time here. There's lots of impalas, lots of water buck, lots going on. We can spend a bit of time and we can eventually then try and kind of see him maybe coming out. I'm hoping he's going to head towards the dam wall a little bit later because that'll be absolutely beautiful if he does. But I'm super, super happy to see him. It, he's getting big as well. He's looking quite bulky. I suppose he's got a full tummy, so that's why. But it looks like him. I, I'm so excited that it's definitely not Hassan. I know that. But it does look like our boy Tumba. So this is where he's obviously been hanging about. You've seen when we were driving would be a good example, although I've seen it with Imani as well, the cheetah. And we've seen just how still and quiet little baby Thompsons can be. Oh, Jackal, you are not popular. Lapwings, gazelle, everything wants to chase you. And we've seen how still and silent they sit until right up until the last moment. And there was that tiny baby Thompsons gazelle in the middle of the road a couple of days ago. And I think there is, a, they, I think first of all, they're eating, they could be eating eggs. Although the lapwings, I think, would be going even, even crazier at this point, if that were the case. But they might be looking for a little Tommy hiding in the grass. There's definitely something that's keeping them here. Just 
walking and lurking. Mm. I think I'm going to go around. If if they are if they, if that is what they're doing, then they'll still be here. She's looking absolutely glorious in the late afternoon sun. So the surprise that I was talking about was in fact Scar, who apparently is not far away from here at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably follow this lioness for a little bit because she's been with him. She's been mating with him. And then we will come back and see if we can find Scar as it starts to get a bit dark. Because of course, as evening falls, there's a good chance that he's going to be roaring. After a few days of mating, uh, there will be two, th two things on this lioness's mind. The first will be to reunite with her pride. The second will be to try and find some food. So generally, mating pairs will not feed while they are mating, and the female's Easter cycle lasts for a few days. So as a result, both... ...free to buy us. He's having a really good nap. Every now and then his eye opens. There's a little robber fly that is flying around there, and so... He's having a thing where he kind of wakes up as the robber fly kind of comes through. Now, Paula, in terms of leopards sharing territory, no, not really. So you'll have a situation where you'll have overlapping territories to a degree in, in terms of the females. Sometimes they'll kind of overlap a little bit. If we look at a case in point is somebody like Tandi and Kuchava or Tandi and Shadow, they're busy overlapping a little bit. We're seeing Shadow and Tandi in the same places and the same thing with... Kuchava and Tandi, you know, they're overlapping around Chitwa and, and Torchwood area. But at the end of the day, not really. They don't really want to overlap with anybody else. They want to share a territory. And in males, in, under no circumstance do they want to share with other males because any other male is mating competition. It is dangerous for their offspring. And it, at the end of the day, is also utilizing their food and water. And so males tend to be a lot more upset about a female, I mean another male being in their territory, then females, females tend to overlap a little bit more than what we see with the males. Although in saying that this northern Sabi Sands area, and in fact the Sabi Sands in general, is a really interesting dynamic on leopard because the density is so high it means that you've got a situation where a number of males are overlapping with one another, they are finding a lot of competition in the area and ultimately they're trying to extend their territories as much as possible but still bumping into each other. So if you think about just this northern sector, just male leopards in a sort of 10,000 hectare block which is 20,000 acres, it's very small if you think that the leopards in the Kalahari raging so much at the moment over the rocks and these two youngsters are having the absolute time of their lives. Now this is not a proper fight, it's just practicing and pro find it's two young bulls. Oh there's another one opening up and displaying and they always do this at sunset well just as the sun is about to go down they've been resting for most of the day not doing anything enjoying the rapids peace and quiet I'm sure maybe the odd cocktail in hand who knows and now they're getting ready to leave the water and then there's even there's some youngsters who have just joined in just to the left just sitting quite close to mom they've also just started pushing each other around and opening their mouths, there's, that looked like mom that was doing that, and the other one's just un submerged itself now. But they looked a little bit younger than the ones we were just watching. So not an uncommon thing to see, and probably the most interesting. I always feel sad for guests when they come on safari, and all they say is that we want to see hippos opening up their mouths. Both of them tend to be quite hungry after they separate. Now, apparently she was mating with a young male, and then a scar sent him packing sometime last night and took over the whole process. I assume probably one of the young males with the collar, or the one with the collar, but I don't know. I'm not 100% certain. It's just the right area for that to be the case. She's most definitely on a mission, but I don't think that mission is hunting. I think that mission is food. <laughs> Idiot. That's what I'm, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, shopping. Um, I think her mission is to reunite with her pride. Uh, whenever we've seen lionesses mating when the pride is around, you can actually see their desperation to try and get back to the rest of the pride. I don't know which lion which lioness this is. I don't know which pride she belongs to. I'm going to say that judging by the direction... With a big male, he just porpoise. That was incredible.
Let's see if he does it again. So then they also just did a bit of a call. He leapt out of the water, which is incredible because when when you see hippos, you think they're not athletic. They can't do anything, but they really can jump quite high out of the water and splash about when they want to. Now, Francis, all the way from Israel, you're wanting to know if uh, hippos always come out of the water at night. They do indeed. Uh, they have to, uh, unless there's grass growing right on the edge of the river, which they can munch on. Sometimes there is, but it's not necessarily the most palatable grass with the highest nutrients. So they have to travel further distances to find suitable for grazing. And I feel as though there's no shortage of grass though in the Mara. I don't think there's ever a shortage of grass. Look at this guy here. And some panicky mothers. So it won't really affect the lioness's ability to hunt. She might be a little bit slower than normal. She might have slightly less stamina than she would otherwise have. It very much depends upon just how just how far along in the pregnancy she is and it's uh, with big cats you actually only really notice the pregnancy right towards the end um as the lioness is getting ready to to or it reaches full term antelope as well i always find it amazing that antelope are able to run away in the way that they are oh little dashing <laughs> dashing dopey Ah, oh, it's all happening as evening descends here in the Mara. And it's not just myself with animals doing interesting things. Let's go across to Taylor, who's got two ha hippos who don't seem to be too happy with each other. They are indeed. Uh, it's something that we all absolutely love to watch, and we typically sit at Chitwa Dam for most of the afternoon and watch hippos play around, and that's what we've got, but not in South Africa, in Kenya, in the Mara River. It actually sounds like we have the beach, the river is... ...in this particular section. Hopefully he turns so I can just double check. Like I say, I might just be jumping the gun slightly, but it looks like him. Big enough paws, that's for sure. But isn't that beautiful? Now I wonder where the meal's been that they've been feeding on, because he's definitely got a meal somewhere because that belly is massive so he's fed somewhere maybe even in this particular section and so it might be our carcass hidden in this drainage we once saw Hosanna here playing with the scrub here it's exactly the same place where we had Hosanna and so maybe just maybe he's got a kill also hidden in this deep gully it's a great place for a leopard to hide a carcass and to hide a meal and so that could be where he is sort of hiding it in somewhere in this little thicket and he might have just gone for water and now has come in and the reason why these impalas saw him is not because of actually him being out and invisible it's that they've got a lot of height so a number of the impalas are standing on top of the dam wall and that means they can actually see into this drainage and down and that's why they were managing to spot him but now they're not so sure they can't really see him so he's actually in a good place for hunting a little bit later if some of the impalas stream past here again maybe just maybe he might get lucky and hunt again although with the belly like that I'm not sure there's going to be too much hunting going on by our young lad at all but so good to see him I'm so glad we've managed to kind of find where he is and this is great news because if he's here it means he's been spending a bit of time in this area and so now we know where he is Tumba seems to be a character that spends and, and funny enough if you don't time it correctly during the day you'll end up just seeing them sleeping on the banks of the river and you can sit with them for 10 minutes and then you've pretty much seen it all so first thing in the morning and just as the sun is setting it's the most exciting and then of course to be able to see them out of the water at night too is pretty spectacular great to see how large they really are there also be a lot of interaction though within uh, this particular pod you'll find that they'll greet one another as well they've all been laying up on top of each other and now they're going to play must be um must be full of energy though if you think about it if you've just been sleeping the whole day ready and raring to go isn't this awesome hello actually looks like a female she must have just been resting up on the bank down below us and something gave her a bit of a fright she came charging out so you saw that again and that wasn't even her at full speed <laughs> like a young male on the left so there's clearly one dominant bull 
amongst this pod and then there seem to be quite a few young males uh, within this group as well but they'll just sit very quietly and they're the ones that will be pushing and shoving each other. Isn't, the river is incredible. The way that it sounds really reminds me of being at the beach, being at the ocean. I close my eyes. It doesn't smell like the ocean to me. Some of the guides say it does. I don't think so. I just think of the waves and waking up early and going swimming. Although, not that you'll find me doing that often at the ocean, I'm petrified of sharks, even though I know there's no chance of me probably being struck by lightning than eaten by a shark, but I'm still scared, nonetheless. They haven't stopped, have they? All just having a great afternoon. And the light is just starting to change now, too. There's a couple of clouds in the west, which is not unusual for the Mara. The sun seems to just be catching them. I'm just, just peeping through those gaps now. Okay. While to mature, and it's not that they can't mate, it's, you'll just find that they're just not big and strong enough to be able to go in and take on a territorial goal. But a very nice scene here. Now I've come down to the Mara River because David told me this morning that there were lions around this area. So I'm looking for the Paradise Pride, but we might have to go a little, a little bit later towards the sort of sunset time. So it's going to be a patience game for us. We're going to have to just sit here and wait with him for a while and then eventually he should get up and maybe move around. Riti, I, no, I don't think Tumbo is marking territory just yet. I mean, if we're not seeing it from Osana, and and we certainly, I don't think we'll be seeing it from Tumbo for quite some time. Remember that he is six months younger than Hosana and at the moment, you know, Tingana is being quite polite to the two boys, and he's allowing them both to spend time here, even though they are no longer with their mothers. And so marking territory is a surefire way to get yourself booted away from the area and get yourself a bit of a hiding from Dad. And so it's better just to take stay nice and chilled and, and, and relaxed and under the radar bulk up get bigger and then only start trying to compete a little bit later in life and so for a while he's going to be i think still not scent marking he'll only probably do it much later in life the interesting thing though is while we talk about scent marking and young males and kind of competition and how that all works i believe quarantine and tingana are having a big spat at as Ari area some of those leopards will have almost 200,000 acres as a territory, a single male leopard. Now, you come into this area and in that 10,000 hectares or 20,000 acres, you have Tamba, Hosana, Gajima, um, this unknown male in Buffel's Hook. You've got Mvula, Tingana, Quarantine, Anderson. And so there is a lot, a lot of young males that are around, or males in general around. There's also Shavambalan on the, on the outskirts, if you think about that too. So there's a number of youngsters and, and, and older leopards, and they're all sharing a very small area. So you're having a situation where it's quite tough for these guys, and it's going to be interesting to see how the dynamics play out. Uh, what, I, what has really surprised me is that Anderson has not pushed any further than saying earlier if a car arrives we might see him just put his head up and have a little look around and see what's going on so he's just a curious cat he always has been I see he's got a little nick on his nose so he's obviously had a little scrap with somebody and got a little sort of cut on his nose there which is to be expected of a male leopard is perfect kind of coat is slowly but surely starting to get little scratches and marks which is pretty much par for the course and you'll get a number of those as life goes on I wonder if maybe that wasn't from the multitude of multiple leopard sightings that he's been seen in so he's been seen around Hosana he's been seen around Tandi obviously his mom he's been seen around Tingana he's been seen around Kuchava and so he's got a number of kind of different leopards that he spent time around and I wouldn't be surprised one of them just swatted a little bit at him and gave him a little cut on his nose it's not bad though it was just superficial and he'll be absolutely fine so he's going to be But look at those eyes, isn't he beautiful? And you can see he's just watching the new people that arrived. Of course, he's got to inspect everybody and make sure that he analyzes everyone so that they're not in any way a problem. Right, now, while we kind of watch Tumba gazing around and checking out his environment, oh, and he's up and moving, so maybe he's gonna walk towards the water hole. But while he's moving, I believe Jamie's lines are also on the move, so let's go across to her. Amazing thing, I've never seen this before. Our lioness has just picked up an ostrich egg off the ground. 
Well, typically the nests are guarded, so there's a good chance that this is actually uh, an abandoned ostrich egg or one that was never destined to make it. But still, this is really quite incredible. She's wandering off with her mouth. She looks like a Labrador with about five tennis balls. Her mouth is so stuffed full of ostrich egg. This is really cool. You don't often get to see this. Uh, if it, I, I would suspect that if this if this ostrich egg came from an active nest, you would see either the male or the female around, and they'd be very distressed and very upset. And I don't see any sign of that, so that's even better because it means we're getting to enjoy the sighting without the fact that a an, an ostrich has lost its egg. I think that egg was lost already. Let's catch up with her because I want to be there when she breaks this possible route into a rocky outcrop. So we're just going to look at her quickly. And then I'm going to have to go around somehow. Okay. I was telling you about the beautiful golden light that's...